But everyone, welcome to how to design flow experiences to propel your creative work. So flow is that state of optimal experience where our highest levels of focus, productivity, and creativity are unlocked. If you're a creative entrepreneur of some sort or a leader, and you're looking to make 2021 your most creative year yet, you're in the right place. I'm just going to do a audio. Hear me okay before I proceed? Do a thumbs up, just a yes. Awesome, awesome. So I can't see the chat box when I'm doing my talk, but I'll. I'm a bit crunchy, okay. Um, but yeah, so I'll check back uh, here and then to see if there's any comments along the way. But we'll get to some of the question questions and discussion a little bit later. So here we go. Let's rock and roll. So, hey guys, my name is Jeff Lyons. Last name is kind of weird, but rhymes with Lyons. And I coach creative entrepreneurs and leaders pursuing big creative goals. So I essentially help them get unstuck, grow their creative competence, and create consistent momentum so that achieving their goals becomes pretty much inevitable. And one of the ways, one of the key ways I do this is by helping my clients experience more flow. I'm super passionate about flow uh, ever since my college years. At that time, I was obsessed with becoming a better guitar player, becoming a better musician. At the time, I was playing with, in a lot of different bands, and I wanted to become the best, most unique, most creative guitar player to become. And I wanted to tap into that feeling of being on fire during each live performance or songwriting session. So around this time, I discovered Mike Csikszentmihalyi's seminal book, Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. And it quickly became sort of like my Bible. To me, it had a key to unlocking our highest levels of creativity, performance, productivity, and even happiness. Years later, I had the opportunity to study under the Flow Master himself uh, in this innovative positive psychology PhD program at Claremont Graduate University. And there, I dedicated my research to studying how to ignite flow and creativity in the context of work. My mission in life is to create and to help others create. And I'm so excited to be here with you today, talking with you about how you can purposefully design flow experiences in order to make 2021 your most creative year yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. If, uh, if you're here today in the session, you're probably a creative entrepreneur. You're leading a creative team. Maybe you're a dancer looking to expand your business. Maybe you're a musician, an author, a product designer. Uh, some part of you identifies as being creative, right? You're not satisfied with the status quo. You want to do more. You want to be different. You have some creative goal that you're pursuing. And as such, a good chance you're probably experiencing what I call the creative work struggle. So this struggle is pretty much guaranteed, fortunately, a point in the pursuit of bringing the ambitious creative goal from concept to completion. To some degree, you are, or you have been in the past, dissatisfied, frustrated, feeling a sense of being stuck in your creative work. You may feel that consistent momentum is in there, not making progress as fast as you'd like. You feel as if you have too little time, and that time you do have available fragmented, distracted, disorganized. You may even feel as if you're losing your motivation or your sense of creative confidence. Can I even pull this off? Why, why can't I follow through on the things that I say I want to do? So many people face this creative work struggle and they think there's not much that can be done. Or worse, they give up on their meaningful goals or they find themselves severely procrastinating and losing hope. But I'm here to tell you today that I believe flow is the key out of this struggle. It's the key to your creative transformation and achieving the type of results and momentum that you desire. And I'm here to show you that flow is something that we can make happen. It's not our control or left to chance or it's not left to the perfect external conditions. We can regain control over our time, energy, and attention. And we can achieve higher levels and deeper levels of focus, unleash higher levels of creativity, rekindle or even amplify our enjoyment for our creative work and more effortlessly create consistent momentum and actually finish those creative projects that we've been saying that we want to do for quite some time. And if we are better able to design flow into our lives, we may be able to finish those projects in less time. 
Without flow, it can be really hard to break out of that creative struggle. But with it, you can become a true creative bat. So this framework I'm gonna share with you today has helped some of my clients design flow experiences that would help them more rapidly, more effortlessly, and with more enjoyment in the process, create momentum and finish their product launches, their creative business launches, novels, screenplays, films, albums, even academic research. I believe this can help you too. Quick audio check, everyone, can everyone hear me? Right. Cool. Here we go. So <clears throat> a lot of you guys, if you're here, you probably have heard of flow, but I really love this description that Mike should send me high. The only guy that has a last name than me lives in his flow. So Mike describes flow as being so involved in an activity that nothing else seems to matter. The ego falls away. Time flies. Every action, movement, and thought follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and are using your skills to the utmost. Sounds really nice, right? Have any of you guys experienced flow before? And if so, what were you doing? Feel free to share in the chat. <clears throat> in flow, in essence, there's these common elements of the flow experience that Mike found in his research. And maybe you can relate to these as well. When you're in flow, you're completely focused on the task at hand. Nothing else matters. There's a merging of action and awareness. You're in the zone, you're on fire. You do things spontaneously and automatically without even think. Everything clicks, you're in control. Everything happens and unfolds effortlessly moment to moment. When in flow, you're not worried about what others may be thinking of you. Your ego takes a back seat. People report a distortion of time when in flow. Time usually feels sped up. Three hours feels like 15 minutes. The flow experience is autotelic in nature. That means the experience is enjoyable in and of itself. It's intrinsically rewarding. You're not externally focused on the outcome or what other people may think of what you're doing, but you're enjoying every minute of the process. After your flow experience, you usually feel a sense of growth, accomplishment. You've grown in some way. So flow it usually is described as a peak experience, one of the best moments of life, or at least extraordinary to do typical everyday life. And flow is something that we can purposely create in our work. Designing for flow, essence comes down to doing three things. One, First, we need to develop a greater self-awareness of what actually brings us flow or close to it. And then we do more of those things in our life. We design more of those activities uh, into our day-to-day. -day. Two, optimizing for flow and designing for flow involves deliberately crafting your work and activities for flow via shaping what I'm calling flow elements. And lastly, to experience more flow in your life, we need to also remove those barriers and the obstacle flow. The first step in designing flow experiences in our lives is to gain that awareness of when we're not in flow and why. So I've created six starting questions to help you better understand what most naturally brings you flow. And you'll wanna go deeper into these on your own later, or perhaps in our flow session, uh, if you're just joining, I'm on one hour free flow coaching. The link is in the chat. You may need to scroll up and find it. You can book a free session using that Calendly link with me. And we can dive really deep into how we can design our life. So today, I'm just going to introduce these questions to you. But if you're so inclined, feel free to respond to these questions in the chat if you feel motivated to do so. But here's the questions. First, can I recall a time, or can you recall a time where you found yourself in the zone or on fire? What were you doing? How long were you doing it for? What was the situation or environment like? Who else was around, if anyone? Two, what activities most energized you? 
What activities do you find challenging, but in a positive way? In what activities do you feel most skilled? In what areas are you aiming to improve your skills? What opportunities exist to push yourself outside your comfort zone? Another thing with these questions to provide a fuller, more comprehensive picture of what naturally gets you in a flow and what does not is to ask the opposite of these questions as well. What activities most drain you? What activities do you find most boring? And what activities do you feel least skilled? What areas are you not looking to improve? Get the drill, right? We want to complete that. We want to complete that full picture of okay. These things bring me flow or close to it, and these don't. So I want to do more of these and less of these things. Or we'll use a framework I'll share with you in a second to better design all these activities to be more flow inducing. You can also use these questions after each activity. So let's say uh, today one hour writing session. After that session, ask these set of questions about, okay, did this activity energize me? Did I find it challenging in a positive way? Did I feel skilled? You can use that as a post activity kind of assessment to see if that activity is bringing you flow or kind of draining you of that flow. <clears throat> so the second and third steps for optimizing and designing for flow are to optimize the flow elements and remove obstacles of flow. So when I'm looking to optimize my own life for flow or helping my clients do so, these are the key flow elements to design for. And you can use this diagnostic framework to identify and design opportunities for flow in any activity task or project of yours. So at the best, you can take activities that are close to flow inducing experiences and boost them so you can get into flow. But even if there's activities that you find really draining or boring, things you have to do but you dislike, you can incorporate and integrate some of these design elements to make them at least a little more enjoyable and potentially even flow activities themselves. So this is a flow is a very highly personal experience. So it's, it's going to take a lot of reflection and experimentation. And as mentioned before, you want to set up a time with me to really dig into your own experiences and work and identify those opportunities, feel free to shoot me an email afterwards or book that free flow coaching session with me. If you have any questions along the way as I'm going through these, please put them in the Q&A box, chat box, and we can discuss in a bit. So the first design element is having clear goals or rules. To master our attention and create an opportunity for flow, we really need to focus and direct our attention on a clear goal or a clear set of rules. At the very least, we need a strong sense of what we want to accomplish. So to optimize for flow, ask yourself, do I have a clear goal of what I want to achieve? If not, then it's, let's look at how we can optimize for that. <clears throat> so some of the main obstacles I see in my clients when it comes to having these clear goals and clear rules we need to look for ways to remove or lessen are the following. A lot of people have too many ideas, have too many possibilities at once that they're trying to do. So they wake up and in their mind they say, I can do this, I have this, I have to do this, 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 yada, 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 right? Like for creative people, it's a blessing and kind of a curse. We have so many ideas and how do we, how do we get to them all, right? So if this is your experience, it is going to be hard to get into flow during your work if you can't decide on which opportunity to focus. The nature of our creative projects are very complex. We're working under a lot of uncertainty and ambiguity. Uh, we don't necessarily know what that perfect next step is, and it's hard to decide what to do exactly. So to optimize for this flow element, we need to get really good at prioritizing, what, at selecting, and just deciding what we're going to do during that moment, during that session, right? That we're trying to dip into flow about. You learn how to simplify those complex creative projects into something more uh, focused and something, right? Something that we can wrap our heads around and, and, and really work on for that session. Getting started is always the hardest part. 
with creative work, right? Once we sit down and start writing or we start recording or we start brainstorming or drawing or designing or, or programming, things become a lot easier But that. There's always that huge resistance at the beginning. So one of the most important things, one of the most useful things that is to is specify a really small entry point, right? So one of my clients, he's a marketing leader. He's tasked with coming up with marketing strategy for 2021 and scaling their business. So that's a big complex uh, project, right? So we really worked hard to prioritize, simplify, and specify that entry point of making progress on that. And with kind of this thought process, he's able to prioritize and simplify to getting started first on email marketing and lead generation. And then the entry point was to sit down for 30 minutes and just start a, a client's pain point. After doing that, that momentum picks up uh, and it's much more effortless than just trying to sit down and say, I have to make progress on this marketing strategy. So the clear set of rules, um, if the ultimate goal is not clear, we can create a clear set of rules instead, right? And this could be setting up a routine, a ritual, a habit, something like a Pomodoro. Instead of my goal, you could say your set of rules is every Tuesday for one hour, I do this, this, and this, right? One of my clients, he's an author. He has a really nice set of rules uh, that he defined. So the night before, his, his morning session, his writing sessions are in the morning. So the night before, he comes up with a framing question, something that a reader or audience might be curious about, right? So for example, what is flow and how do you get into it? The next morning, he simply has that session for 30 minutes and he responds to that question. He answers that question, one of his rules of the game that writes down the framing question and the next morning he answers it for that specific amount of time. Skip ahead to the next design element. So the next design element is clear immediate feedback. <clears throat> so ask yourself, how do I know if I'm gaining momentum towards my goal? Clear immediate feedback, it helps us align our attention with action and makes that feeling of the experience being automatic, effortless, and spontaneous possible. And this is more about with the at hand, not necessarily getting feedback from other people. For example, if I was playing guitar and I was doing a gig or in a jam session, I would right away that the chord or the note I'm playing is in key or out of key, right? If you're a designer or artist, that feedback may simply just be that what you're doing looks good or not, right? It's a very internally in a feedback situation. So the goal to clear feedback is having an unclear goal or set of rules. Without a clear goal, rules you're just experiment you're just experiencing information so but with a clear goal this information is relevant and it becomes feedback whether you can use that to tell am i closer to this goal or not am i closer am i making progress or not another obstacle to clear immediate feedback is you may have that expertise in that domain quite enough yet you may need to boost your skills a bit so you have that intuition that ability to better identify if what you're doing is working or not. So if you're a beginner guitar player and you're trying to solo over advanced chord, jazz chord changes, you may not have that expertise developed to know if you're doing the right thing or not. To optimize for this design element, we need to focus on progress and momentum, right? Can help to develop checkpoints along the way. So for example, one of my clients, he's, he's, his goal is to, uh, write a f and produce a feature film and submit it to Sundance and become the youngest uh, premiering uh, person at Sundance. So one of the he designed along the way is finding and selecting the right music and soundtrack for each scene. And the feedback for him is, does it feel right as he's reading the script while the song is playing in the background? So it's a very internally driven uh, process and trusting your internal guidelines is important. Now this F is the flow model that Mike Semihai developed, and it really helps us better understand if we're in flow and how to get, and if we're in flow and how to better reach that peak creative performance level. 
This is a challenge skill balance. So ask yourself, is the activity challenging? Does it fully activate my skills? And is there a balance? So this model is maybe a little confusing to uh, decipher, but let me help you. So number three, this let's say this is a leader at a start and he's feeling anxious. The challenge level is higher than his level of skills. So for this leader to get into flow, she may need to develop stronger leadership skills so she can dip into that flow channel and experience flow. Or if this, conversely, if this leader is bored or unfilled, and number two, her job is too easy, she's been doing it for some time now, she needs to take on a bigger challenge, like leaving a global team versus a local team or taking on more responsibility in order to dip to that level of optimal experience. So the number one thing that I see in my clients in terms of creative work is that's the most challenging for them is actually a lot of times that challenge level uh, of what they're doing is too low, right? They're, they try to stay in that comfort zone, that zone where they, they know 100% that they can tackle the task at hand. Well, and that's great. That's fine to be in that space, but it's really important to kind of boost that challenge to feel a little uncomfortable so you do feel that growth inducement. In some ways that you can add challenge to any task at hand are to speed things up, try to go faster, right? Can you do something in 30 minutes that yesterday took you 45 minutes to do? Make it a game, make it a competition, ideally with yourself. Can you beat your past score? Uh, simply adding a timer to what you're doing can kind of help you get in that challenge mode. It's you're in this kind of game situation where you're trying to beat the clock. So that's similar to like a Pomodoro experience. If an activity is too simple or too boring, you can make it more complex, make it more challenging by adding new rules. So every time I do X, then I do Y, right? If you're analyzing data or organizing a spreadsheet, try typing that to the tempo of the music you're listening to. Another way to boost the challenge level is to move something up to chance or spontaneous in the moment, right? Kind of like if you were in an improv group or a sketch group or a jazz band, there's some element of possibility and chance there that you haven't been able to prepare for. And lastly, kind of creating more challenge and create a deadline or an event, right? So one of my favorite guitar players of all time, Andy Timmons, uh, I was trying to pick his brain about how he got so good. He said, if you want to learn how to play country music, book yourself a country gig. So, right? so he, he used this, this, uh, um, this thing of creating a deadline or event to force himself to boost his skills and kind of up the challenge of what he's doing. And we're not going to quite get through all of the materials today, but I think this is important, uh, enjoyment. So a big part of flow is, is experiencing that intrinsic enjoyment, that autotelic experience. And if you've designed your other elements well, enjoyment becomes more natural, right? You're absorbed in the task. You're experience, experiencing progress and feedback. And you likely have that sense of pride, accomplishment, or effort of taking on something challenging. But one thing you can ask yourself when you're doing your activity is, what would it take for me to do this activity for the sake of doing it without the expectations of external rewards? How can I make this activity more of something that I want to do versus something I should or have to do, right? A lot of the language uh, that I catch my clients using, I should do this, I have to do this, right? Other people do this, so I should too. When we're using that language, things become less intrinsic and less autotelic and it's harder to dip into flow. So if there's some way to add enjoyment to uh, your experience, go for it, right? It could be adding an element of learning. It could be making it a game or creating a fun rule um, or just a, something as simple as adding your music. I'm gonna dip out of, um, Let's look at the chat. Bear with me here. New to hop in. But yeah, so I'm going to, there's a few more 
that we could cover and we <clears throat> aren't gonna have time to do all all of it today but i really want to invite you guys to shoot me an email i'll send you a copy of the slides um book that one hour flow coaching session the link is in the chat i'll put it right here again in the chat connect with me on twitter or the web um i'd love to connect with you you design your experiences for better flow so you can create that momentum in 2021 on your creative projects and creative work that you're looking to do And just look at you if you want to go to the website, I will be putting your, uh, a longer, deeper dive flow course on the same topic, um, which will cover all the design elements in more depth with more examples. Uh, that's one of my goals for 20 uh, in the first quarter. So get on my mailing list. Just for, send me an email, book a session with me, and we'll keep the conversation.